My wife Jenny and I were high school sweethearts. We've been together for over 15 years now. I really thought I knew everything about her. But the messages I've been getting on Facebook lately have me questioning that. It started a couple of weeks ago. Jenny and I were winding down in bed around midnight. She fell asleep pretty quickly, like usual. I was still scrolling on my phone when I heard the notification for a new Facebook message. It was from Jenny's account. I clicked it, confused as to why she'd message me when we were right next to each other. But the message wasn't from her at all. It said, She sound asleep beside you, completely unaware. Does it bother you knowing I could sneak in one night and kill her while you lie powerless? I froze. What the hell? Was someone hacking Jenny's account to prank me? I tried shaking Jenny awake, but she was dead to the world. My hands shook as another message appeared. Don't wake her yet. Let's chat, just us. I've been watching you both a long time. I know things only someone close to you would know. Like the scar on her hip from falling off her bike sophomore year. Or the time you snuck vodka from your dad's liquor cabinet and mixed it with orange juice. You two tell each other everything, don't you? I started panicking. This wasn't just a prank, they knew personal details about us somehow. I quickly changed Jenny's password and wrote back, Who is this? Leave us alone or I'm calling the police. The creep just replied with a winking emoji. I stayed awake all night on guard after that. In the morning I told Jenny what happened. She seemed really freaked out too, and immediately deactivated her Facebook account just to be safe. I hoped that would make the weirdo leave us alone. But a few nights later I got a chat request on my own Facebook. My blood ran cold when I saw it was from Jenny's account again. The psycho had just reopened it. The message said, Changing her password won't help. I'll always find a way in. You intrigue me, though. Loyal to your beloved wife even when I threaten her life. Let's keep this game going. What else can I confess to knowing about your lives? I was livid. This creep was toying with us for sick amusement. I tore into them in my reply, saying the cops would trace their location and arrest them for harassment. All I got back was a chilling response. I'm untraceable. The more interesting question is, how long until I stop being so... remote? See you soon. That was it. I had to get the police involved before this escalated even more. They came and took down all the information, but warned with only digital evidence, finding the culprit would be tough. They suggested we delete our Facebook accounts for now, which I did right away. I changed all our online passwords and beefed up security around the house. After a while, things seemed to settle down again. Maybe that creep finally got bored and left us alone. But it was only the calm before the storm. After a few quiet weeks, I awoke late one night to use the bathroom. As I sat on the toilet half asleep, something caught my eye outside the bathroom window. I staggered over to get a closer look, and almost screamed when I saw a pale grinning face staring back at me. Adrenaline pumped through me as I realized it was that stalker, right outside my house watching me. How did they find where we lived? The creep waved slowly, then slunk back into the darkness. I raced to wake Jenny and tell her what happened. She wanted to call the police right away, but I convinced her to wait till morning when we could give our full statements. Neither of us got a wink of sleep that night, though. First thing the next day, we were at the police station recounting everything, from the Facebook threats to the chilling Peeping Tom appearance. Unfortunately, there was still little they could do without evidence of who this person was. They suggested a home security system which we installed right away. Motion sensor floodlights and cameras cover every corner of the property. No way that freak could lurk now without being spotted. That very night, the alarm on our new system blared to life. I rushed to the security console and saw the side gate was open. Cameras showed a shadowy figure sneaking through our yard. He wore all black with a mask covering his face. As I watched the footage, the man turned and looked right into the camera lens. He pulled off his mask, revealing a sallow face and greasy blonde hair. I didn't recognize him at all, but he grinned grotesquely and waved before slipping back through the gate into the night. I saved the video and this time the police had clear evidence of this guy harassing us. But even with screen grabs of his face, no matches came up in their databases. It was like he was a ghost. After that, security footage would capture him skulking around the property now and then. But the masked man always kept his distance just out of reach. Other nights we'd wake to tapping sounds at the window, only to peek out and see nothing. My wife and I were now prisoners in our own home. We barely went out, just stayed hypervigilant waiting for this psycho's next move. 
Then late one night, Jenny shook me awake in a panic. She'd woken to use the bathroom and saw muddy footprints inside our house downstairs as if someone had broken in. We grabbed weapons and searched every room, closet, under beds. No sign of an intruder now, but the smudged prints on the hardwood were real as day once we turned the lights on. The police came and swept for prints or clues, but said the guy must have worn gloves. How he entered unseen was a mystery since all doors and windows were still bolted. I nearly had a breakdown then. This maniac could apparently come and go from our house at will, bypassing all security like a phantom. Nowhere was safe. In the following weeks, things only got more twisted. We'd find doors mysteriously opened inside the house, knickknacks askew like someone was subtly moving them. Once, Jenny's makeup and hairbrush were arranged neatly on the bathroom counter, which she never left out. It was like psychological torture, him letting us know he'd been in our most private spaces while we were helpless. The police chalked it up to mind games meant to torment us when they inevitably found no trace of break-ins, but it all felt so real. Eventually, we decided to stay with family until this creep was caught. The night before we left, I was up late packing everything when I heard faint humming coming from downstairs. It was the song Jenny and I first danced to at senior prom. Every hair stood up on my neck. I grabbed my gun and stalked down the stairs towards the living room. The humming grew louder. I leapt into the doorway prepared to fire if needed. But no one was there. The room was empty. Just our normal furniture and belongings. Yet I could still hear the faint humming as if coming through the walls themselves. Jenny and I left that house the next day and never returned. We're in a new place now with better security than Fort Knox. I still wake at every creak of the floorboards at night. And a few times I could swear I'd heard that chillingly familiar humming tune as we drifted off to sleep. But I forced the thought away each time. The cops keep in touch, but no new leads or traces of the stalker have turned up yet. I can't live like this forever in a constant state of fear over who might be waiting unseen in the shadows of our own home. But as long as Jenny stays safe, I don't care what happens to me. I'll kill that creep if he ever sets foot here uninvited. I need to save my wife from that masked madman's twisted obsession. She's everything to me. I won't lose her to the sinister darkness that found us somehow, not without a fight. So for now, Jenny and I huddle each night like scared kids at a sleepover, praying for the nightmares to end someday. Because our real-life horror story already has us dreading the moment we close our eyes. But morning will come again soon. It has to. Uh, I can't believe I'm even writing this down, but I just have to get it out there. This happened to me last night during that nasty thunderstorm we had. I swear it was straight out of a horror movie. It started when the lights in my house started flickering around 8 p.m. I figured it was just the storm causing power surges or whatever. But then, everything went completely dark. I grabbed my phone and turned on the flashlight so I could see. The Wi-Fi was out too, so I knew the power was totally down. I went to the basement to check the circuit breaker. As I carefully walked down the old wooden stairs, I felt that creeped-out feeling you get when it's pitch black and dead quiet. My flashlight cast weird shadows everywhere. I got to the panel and flipped all the switches, but nothing happened. Crap, this was bad. Then I heard it. A quiet laughing sound came from the far dark corner of the basement. It was like a child's laugh, but with something off about it. The hairs on my neck stood up and my stomach dropped. H Hello, I called out shakily. Is someone there? Silence. I shone my light around but couldn't see anything. Just boxes and junk down there. I tried to convince myself it was the wind or creaky house sounds, but deep down I felt uneasy. Heart pounding, I quickly went back upstairs and locked the basement door. I grabbed a kitchen knife to defend myself just in case. A few hours later, around midnight, some of the power came back on. The living room lights worked, but the basement lights were still out. I tried not to imagine someone or something lurking down there in the dark. I wanted to flee the house, but a tree had fallen and blocked the driveway. With the wind howling outside, I was trapped. I called the police, but they said emergency crews couldn't get through until morning with all the debris on the roads. So I hunkered down and prepared to wait out the night. I kept the knife close by, but eventually I had to pee. The bathroom was down the hall, past the basement door. I took a deep breath and hurried to the bathroom. As I washed my hands, the lights flickered. I froze, listening. Then I heard scratching on the basement door, followed by that spine-chilling child's laugh. 
fight or flight kicked in. I bolted back to the living room. As I got back to the living room, I heard a thump from the basement, followed by that spine-chilling child's laugh again. I pushed the armchair in front of the front door as a barricade. I was terrified but also angry that this was happening in my house. Around three, I finally dozed off from utter exhaustion on the couch. A loud bang jolted me awake. Someone was trying to get in the front door but couldn't because of the barricade. I stayed very still, clutching my knife and praying they would give up. Slow little footsteps came up the stairs. I could hear demented giggling getting closer in the darkness. This was it. I was going to die cowering in my own home. Suddenly the figure stepped into the moonlight streaming through the window. I stifled a scream. It was just a stupid raccoon. The idiot must have fallen down the chimney and gotten trapped in the basement. I almost cried from relief. The raccoon waddled away and I collapsed on the couch, laughing at myself for being so terrified. As the adrenaline wore off, I felt totally ridiculous. It was all just a freaky coincidence. The storm, the power, the noises. I chuckled thinking how stupid I'd feel telling anyone about my crazy home invasion. But as I drifted off, I could swear I heard one last faint, creepy child's laugh echoing through the silent house. I woke up this morning and something felt off. As I opened my eyes, the first thing I noticed was my bedroom window wide open. The curtains were blowing in the breeze, which was strange because I live on the 10th floor of an apartment building. I never open that window, especially not at night. I sat up in bed, my heart already starting to race. How did the window get open? I specifically remember closing it last night before going to sleep. I'm always extra careful about locking everything up tight since I live alone. As I walked over to the window to close it, I felt a wave of vertigo looking down at the street so far below. I slammed the window shut and locked it, my hands shaking. I told myself maybe I just forgot to close it last night, or maybe I opened it in my sleep, although that seemed unlikely. I tried to go about my morning routine as usual, but I couldn't shake the uneasy feeling. Had someone been in my apartment while I was sleeping? The thought sent a chill down my spine. I knew I definitely hadn't opened that window, which meant someone else must have. I decided to inspect the rest of the apartment just to be safe. The front door was still locked and chained from the inside. Nothing else seemed disturbed or out of place. I even checked under the bed and in all the closets. There was no sign of an intruder. After a thorough search of the apartment, the only plausible explanation was that I had simply left the window open by mistake. I tried to convince myself that's all it was. Just an absent-minded mistake. But as I got ready for work, I couldn't stop thinking about the open window. I kept glancing over at it like I expected to see someone peering in. I knew it wasn't possible. We were ten stories up. But I couldn't shake the ominous feeling. The thought of leaving the apartment all day with that window unlocked made me anxious. So before leaving, I opened it up just to double check that it was actually locked now. I tugged on it as hard as I could and it didn't budge. Satisfied it was secure, I headed out the door. Work dragged on longer than usual that day. The entire time my mind kept wandering back to the open window. No matter how much I tried to rationalize it, some gut instinct told me something was very wrong. As soon as I got home from work, I ran to check the window again. Just as I had left it that morning, it was locked tight. I let out a sigh of relief. See, I told myself, everything is fine. You're being paranoid over nothing. I tried to push the incident out of my mind and go about the rest of my evening. I made dinner, watched some TV, and got ready for bed. But when it came time to actually get into bed, I hesitated. Maybe I should sleep on the couch instead, just in case. Don't be ridiculous, I told myself. You already checked everything thoroughly. The apartment is safe. Stop letting your imagination get the best of you. Finally, I worked up the nerve to get into bed. Exhausted from a long, stressful day, I fell asleep almost instantly. Sometime later I stirred awake. In my groggy state it took me a moment to realize why. A loud banging sound had awoken me. Adrenaline flooded my veins. The banging persisted, seeming to come from the living room. Terrified I crept out of bed and silently grabbed the baseball bat I kept under it just in case. Bat held high, I tiptoed toward the living room. In the darkness I couldn't see anything amiss, but the banging was only getting louder the blows becoming more forceful. My hands slick with sweat, I fumbled along the wall searching for the light switch. As light flooded the room, the banging stopped. 
Yet there was no one there. Breathing heavily, I searched every inch of the apartment. Nothing. The banging had just... stopped. Then I realized where it had been coming from. The bedroom window. I rushed back to my room and there it was. Wide open once again. The curtains blowing violently in the night wind. Fear paralyzed me. I wanted to run to close it, but I couldn't move. That's when I saw it. A face peering in at me from the darkness. Terror gripped me as our eyes locked. A twisted grin spread across his face as he gripped the outside of the window frame. Before I could even scream, he was gone. Vanished into the blackness. I dashed to slam the window shut, locking it for good this time. I grabbed a chair and lodged it under the handle just to be safe. Heart pounding, I huddled in the corner with my bat. I knew I should call the police, but what would I tell them? I had no proof other than an open window. No signs of forced entry. No evidence anyone else had been here. They'd never believe me. So instead, I stayed frozen all night listening to every creak of the building. Bat held ready to swing. When morning light finally crept in, I was exhausted. But I knew I had to get out of there. That morning, I packed a bag and went to stay with a friend. I never spent another night in that apartment. All I left was an open window that I pray stays closed from now on. I'll never know who or what was in my apartment those nights, and I'm not sure I want to. The memory of that face grinning at me in the dark is enough to shake me to my core. I don't think I'll ever feel truly safe again.